And uh, thank you very much for everyone. Sasha is here today on this uh, exciting topic named Secret to Scissoring. Um, I will just be a little bit uh, quiet for a while until this uh, video doesn't go viral. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever part of the world you are. Uh, good morning, morning to our great friends from New Zealand. And I'm really sorry to, uh, to, to hear that you suffered from, from a terrible storm that actually hit a lot of you. So all positive uh, thoughts and prayers goes to, to all of you on that part of the world. And if you can just uh, comment, ask your questions, uh, like and share this video. So this uh, name secret to scissoring would go as much as viral as possible because I got, <clears throat> after I posted a lot of videos on uh, grooming dogs using scissors, I got an amazing request about uh, uh, how do I use the scissors uh, and what is the secret to that and uh, how did I develop that secret? Uh, uh, no, how did I develop that routine? Because after 25 years I actually don't think about that as Usually, most of you don't. And, uh, but I needed a little quiet time in order not to show you how to do it, but to teach you why it should be done that way. Because uh, when it comes to the scissoring, it's not only a secret of nice shapes and well-developed um, how can I say, beautiful outline that you are able to develop with your, with your, with your work and with your, with your story, to speak your story very nicely. It's uh, something that can completely ruin your career because uh, there is a very much implemented uh, carpal tunnel syndrome that a lot of groomers suffer from and they are forced to retire very early age without getting possibility to develop a huge, nice and beautifully successful career in this, in this beautiful field actually that we, all, that we all love. So because of that, teaching about the scissoring technique is quite dangerous, I can call it that way, because the wrong interpretation or the wrong, uh, it might bring along a, a wrong influence to the viewer so the trying to reset that particular um, already developed habit might lead to frustration. So because of that, when, when I speak to my, it's not a problem to speak to the first timers. So the guy who already who never had the scissors in the hand and who, who is just trying to develop the habit. But when you are teaching and when you are speaking to the audience that is actually with already developed habit of the scissoring and interesting into improving the habit of the scissoring, it becomes very dangerous. Because habits are developed on as a continuously repetition of kind of movement with a for example, when we speak about uh, scissoring, it's a movement of the, of the tongue or of the hand. So it's already become subconscious action. So it's a habit. Subconscious action we call habit. If you want to change the habit because you are not satisfied with the scissoring technique you have at the moment because of the lot of reasons, and I can just name a quite, a quite, a quite. Is there, uh, maybe, uh, I, maybe I just, uh, oops, um, just a little question so I have, I have uh, focus on, on, on your, and maybe on your questions as well. So maybe I should just uh, go to my page and see actually uh, what is going on. Uh, page, just a second. So I can answer some of your questions live maybe. 
Okay? Just a question. You can go like this and you can turn off my sound completely and turn off my 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 Wi-Fi. Okay, so here I can see your questions. Okay, hello from from everywhere in the world. I will I will be here so I can so I can uh, catch up with your with your with your uh, uh, questions. Okay, <clears throat> where I where I actually stop. So uh, and because of that, you are here because you might wonder uh, how you can improve your your scissoring technique and how you can how you can become better in the in the scissoring. So it's meaning that on some stage, uh, just a sec. Okay, here are the questions. Okay. Um, oh, hello, 1:15 p.m. here in Texas. Hi, <laughs> Becky. Thank you very much for being here at this time. Okay. So uh, back to back to content is uh, back to subject is uh, if we want to change the 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 the, the, um, the habit now we need to approach it consciously and consciously develop some other behavior of ours that will lead us to leaving the bad habit and implementing and re replacing it with a good habit of handling the scissors and this might be very tough to do because we are not learning it from scratch the, 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 the first beginners and if you are watching and you are uh, uh, just just suddenly interesting in, in, into the grooming and, and handling the scissors or you want to groom your dog and because of that you ended up being with us tonight it will be very easy for you to develop a new habit but also I must uh, tell to everyone who already want to improve on that that if something uh, you are doing wrong it's not wrong if, if you want to improve of something you need to develop a new habit that will replace the old and the bad one you developed. Okay, <clears throat> and in order to do that, if you are already a professional groomer, you need to understand not how I am handling the scissors, but why we are doing that way. And once you guide your conscious mind with why something is need to be executed that way, it will suddenly become a new habit. And you will, whatever, whatever you need to know, is that you cannot change it overnight. Because you, I, I'm, I'm uh, suggesting you, after we uh, get with a little more people on call, so I start uh, speaking about, uh, about uh, real, real things, and real uh, about, uh, about itself, uh, about itself. <clears throat> it will be a very good, uh, uh, what I wanted to say, it's, uh, da -da -da -da. okay, yes, uh, we cannot just, uh, okay, decide today that we want to develop a new habit and from, from tomorrow we are using it already. Transmission in between replacing a new habit, replacing the bad habit with a new habit, might lead to frustration and then you need to understand that if you end up being a little bit frustrated it's okay because the old habit doesn't want to leave and what is very important to understand that the new habits are developed in a way that they just appeared and appear in your everyday work and you just suddenly understand that wow when did this happen? And what you need to do is, I will leave this video for, for I mean, forever on this, on this page, so you, you are forced to watch it over and over, because everything what you need to do is to ensure your conscious mind that this way of handling the scissor has its purpose, based on the very anatomy, uh, anatomy of, our, of our hand. And once you understand that, there is nothing you need to worry about. Just accept those facts, because that works, either you believe it or not. It's just like, uh, 
I don't believe in uh, day or night. The nature doesn't care too much do you believe it or not. It already, the light will, okay, the day will follow the night as well, the night will follow the day. Uh, either we do, <laughs> okay, um, believe in that or not. Some things and natural law are the habits. Uh, the natural law are the, the, the laws. And everything, because using the scissors is very unnatural for the, for the, for the movement of the, hand, uh, of, of the hand. And because of that, you must work and use your body as a support. So the scissors must work according to the body's laws and the muscular system actually that is developed inside the head other, uh, the, the hand, otherwise it will bring a very much disease if we do not appreciate a natural law that actually do exist in, a, and we, we want to break that, that law because we will force our thumb to move more or less um, like independently uh, compared to the rest of the of, of our of our face. Okay, hi New Zealand. I hope you all all are okay, and uh, I love you. I love you very much there. Uh, I love you all over the place. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Uh, okay, so first of all is uh, we all learned that the habit of the good scissor handling is that your tongue will move only without leaving, you know, without moving the rest of the, of the head, of the head, hand, okay, I'm sorry, hand and head, okay, and actually this will be your guiding blade and the other one will be your, you know, cutting blade, so this will cut, this will guide, and as much as this remain, remain straight and quiet, okay, the surface we will do after scissoring, will be smoother and nicer and the finished work of yours depend only on the great prep work and the scissoring technique you developed why someone is not getting a result a result wanted wanted result what we need in order to express a shape of the dog outside of our hand head are two things and I already spoke about that and I will continue doing on that because that that code helped me achieve a great uh, approach to the breeds and get great breeds profiles but not less help me help others understand the way and then appreciating the way the way results appear on their own because our results are result of some action that we take and if we do take the right action the results will be right and if we do take a little bit of different action, ac actions we will get a little bit of different results and sometimes we might end up wanting to be better than we are and then what you do is actually going on uh, over and over circulating on the seminars what are amazing way to learn something uh, quickly because uh, most of the speakers and I really do appreciate the entire industry of the speaking uh, speaking grooming industry because the guys are doing great and the successful ones are they to share their passion the way they are doing things and the the, the tips and the tricks that help every one of you improve everyday job and life on the end of the day but if you ask 99% of the successful ones are not aware of the path needed and of, of the path they executed until they didn't get to the point that they have a great result. So, and what my academy is interesting and what my, my way of teaching is interesting is the path, is the way, what way you need to get through in order to appear as an ultimately great great groomer on the end of the of the line because that is what will make your brand be differentiate among the others if you are going 
and always try to do what everyone else is doing, you are just becoming a copy of the good ones. Because that's the process of improving. But today, it's somehow too slowly to develop in the way learning it hardest way. Because this way, this world today, all of the secrets are already defined. The way is how will you decode those things. Okay, I think that we are okay now to, to start this uh, thing of ours. And we will go. Are we back? Okay, so we had a little uh, broadcast issue. Okay, now what we are going to do is to get over the the the, the little anatomy of the of the hand that is very important for us to understand because otherwise there is no reason. Everyone will tell you that what you need to do is to learn your thumb to move only. So thumb only because the rest the rest of the of the of the head, hand should support the this guiding plate okay and then the the cutting plate will just go up and down up and down until this one remains straight okay and as much as you groom and as much as you groom okay your guide line remains straight and your thumb only moves up and down up and down okay why is this important and why this need to work with the natural Anatomy of the hand is because uh, of the follows. Come, come slowly, please. Okay. Uh, what is important to know is here we have five fingers. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And why the thumb is very important for for us and ac actually for the humans, because if you keep thumb, thumb is the most important and most strongest uh, finger of all fingers we have in our hand. Okay. Why? Because try to do this yourself at home if you are not watching from the phone, uh, holding it uh, in front of you. Okay, keep the, the thumb very straight, keep the thumb very, very fixed aside. Okay, and without moving thumb, try to move and direct and move any finger towards thumb without moving thumb. Try to connect the finger with the thumb and you will see if the thumb doesn't move towards the finger there is no need there is no there is no uh, how can i say uh, no way that they will meet okay so you cannot direct any of the fingers towards the thumb if thumb doesn't move towards the fingers and if you keep all of the fingers straight the thumb can move and touch base of all of the fingers remain here Okay, and there is a particular anatomy reason for that, because you see this big thing here. Okay, it's, it's some kind of muscles we have here, and this is very important to know. And we are not going deep here in the anatomy of the of the of the of the of the head, <coughs> more uh, of the uh, the anatomy of the head. Just I will show you because I have prepared some sketches for you that here okay here you can see that this this is what i'm speaking about it's it's a it's a thumb and here you see it's a one muscle actually that help us control and do with the with the with the <clears throat> with the with the thumb everything we need okay so then we have a second second muscle in between okay one two and now we have a third one also. So all of these three muscles, what we have, what we can call here, now here is one, okay. All of this muscle is different muscles that are actually controlling movement of the thumb. And look at the muscles uh, of, the, of the fingers, almost does not exist because these are uh, not the muscles, I don't know on English how do we call tativa is on Serbian, but I don't know how we will call them. It's a, it's end of the muscle, okay? And all of the four fingers does end up in one muscle. <clears throat> okay, now you see, this is, uh, these are the muscles on the thumb, on the, our head, hand, okay? And if we go forward, now you will see that this thumb is actually completely connected to one 
big muscle that stays here big muscle that stays here okay and it's connected to the thumb you see these four fingers are badly connected to the other muscle and we have it here okay so these four fingers are together connected to one muscle okay while like a completely separated part of the hand is a thumb with its muscle on the this uh, part of the of the of the hand okay and this is amazing to know because now you know if you will practice thumb and improve the strength of these three muscles that cares about uh, about a thumb on the head okay and also if you develop the the big muscle on the this part of the of the of the hand okay you will have like um, this part of the hand completely uh, developed regardless uh, rest of the hand and that will help you that will help you completely you know separated thumb as a different part of your hand and use it in a proper way so visualizing that by doing this only practice you are achieving is developing and separating the thumb together with the muscle that controls it is this okay there are these three one two three and then they're all connected to this one that leads to this big muscle here and this muscle controls only thumb and almost the second half of the muscles on the uh, on this uh, part of the of the of the of the hand i don't know on on on, on, on English, how you say that, controls the rest of the four, okay? So this one moves, and if this one half, it, you, it will look like it's a one finger only. But regarding the muscle on the hands, is the half of the hand. So with the thumb, half of the hand will control the movement, and half of the hand will con will control the kindness of the of the that blade that actually is creating the surface because that blade need to stay straight and now when you see only thing that mentally you need to understand is by developing a habit of moving only finger you are able to use your finger and develop it as a completely separate part of the of the body if of the body of the of the head if you will not do like that we will see what's what's going on bouncing with the scissors and not be able to control them and then all kind of things that are happen not nice surfaces something what you can do by cutting it once you are doing it over and over and over losing a time and on the end of the day you end up being frustrated naming yourself being a pet groomer only shaving because snap on combs or things like that chunkers can help you achieve nice and great profiles those things are very nice and okay because can save you time but use it only because you want to save the time don't use it because you don't know how to do it with the scissors use it as an option not as a must, Develop, developing a perfectness in the mastering of the, of, the, of the scissor technique in the grooming world is a must. Because that is a first step towards your art of state of the art grooming. Because that will help you gain fulfillment out of this business that can help you on the end of the day gain more from the everyday dirty job that clients want from us. And you don't have time to practice and someone will ask why I would practice a scissoring technique because I never scissor the dogs I don't have clients that require you don't do that because of clients you do that because of yourself you need to develop your business separately from your master ability to do your business because business of making money is serving to the clients fulfilling their needs and sometimes yes it is a shakedown but that does not protect myself of saying yes 
I am as well state of the art groomer. And Sundays or Saturdays when I don't have what to groom in my shop, I have my dog or I have a couple of clients that I call and then I hold seminars and do something else rather than just doing my everyday business of shaving clients' dogs or you know doing some nice puppy Asian trims that you actually do not get chance to develop yourself to the maximum of your potential. This is something how uh, this is told on the very beginning of the academy because understanding the natural physiology of the of the of the of the of the of the anatomy of the of the hand can help us work together with the nature even though we are forcing nature to do it opposite because it's not natural movement only for such a long period of time i remember the um, the the great um, friend of mine from belgium i was uh, i was sharing the stage with her uh, she's name is uh, kitty and uh, she was, you know, handing a scissor to one guy in the, in, the, in the audience and he said, okay, now you, no, uh, you can't uh, take uh, one guy supposed to, you know, uh, have that stopwatch, so to count how one minute, and the other one was counting how many times she moved the thumb over the minute. And that was something tremendous. The number when you actually real, and this is something that I want, don't want to tell you because you should re, uh, you should do it yourself. So you just uh, take your uh, take your family or take yourself, but you, you can do it as well. Uh, put the stopwatch in front of you and then count how many times you put up and down the thumb over the minute, and then the, then uh, multiply that with the time you use doing uh, a scissor work on some dog, and then you will see how much is importance of developing a great habit of using a scissors because that can lead us to the future where the sky is the limit or forcing us to retire because of the carpal tunnel syndrome that will actually start you know um, the strong calcification of the of the carpal tunnel jaw because we are doing the scissoring completely uh, forcing both muscles to work and then no that's completely unnatural and you cannot develop that habit without ruining the carpal tunnel and then you can end up having a very bad very bad that I, I saw so many friend of mine developed and uh, retired because of this syndrome and that is why I, I was very blessed to 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 uh, had that uh, very very young age of mine I was in the grade school and the girl you know I was ending up in the school holding the scissors like this mostly like everyone okay and then I was scissoring and I said why I would change the scissoring technique because uh, surfaces I get for me are very nice and then I scissored 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 and she said no you have an option to develop yourself to be a cold cutter or, the, or you can develop your skill to kill, to be state-of-the-art groomer. And then you can cut the coat as well. Plus, there is not a much difference between, you know, I'm just opening the scissors and I'm cutting. And I remember my poodle. Uh, it was a very big, busy school. I was, uh, I, I was at, uh, I think it was uh, 60. I was the age of 16. And I was, uh, <coughs> uh, she was my icon those days. I, I stayed. When she, when someone mentioned her name, I stayed straight like this, like a little baby, you know? Can you imagine? I can imagine 16 years of age now, myself now. And then she told me, like, you hold thumb here and then you support your, you know, shaping blade with the, with the rest of the, with the rest of the, of the, of the scissors. And actually the hole will be placed, the, this one closest to the, to the, to the little one will be placed here and then you, open and groom with only <clears throat> and I said to myself that that not to be like you know 16 years always know is, know is better so she gave, he, she handed one poodle to me and I was in the corner so I was not thinking she's watching and I, 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 I said to myself oh, okay I will do it my way and then when she comes I will pretend that I did it her way so I want to show her that actually there is no difference how, how I handle scissors so I started to do that. 
like this, of course. And then, I don't know how, but then I was, I was a little stupid and I was actually only 16. Uh, I didn't realize actually that the entire shop was uh, in the mirrors. And I, I had a corner table with my poodle and I was, she didn't sew me, I was thinking she's not sewing me, seeing me because here is a dog and here is I'm doing my little cheating thing and her table is just uh, in front of, uh, you, you know, a side of me. So she, she's not able to see me, but of course she was able to see me because there was a mirror. And while I was grooming things like this, at one sec, I don't know where she came from, okay, how did she appear there, you know, she was pinching my, pinching my, my, my hand with a, with a, with a very big comb, you know, poodle would comb, because I remember she had a poodle, and I had a poodle, and she was, you know, she was like tiny little, little girl, lady, in two steps, she was close to my stables, he pinching my, my head with, uh, with that comb, I, I didn't know, was I surprised morely, mostly uh, of her coming towards me or the pain I, I felt uh, over that She said, I tried to warn you, it's only way of holding the scissors, that way or highway, and the highway was through the door. I said, yes, ma'am. That was the last day of my life I ever used scissor like this. So I was going home and practicing. And by then I developed these little pra uh, practices that I was, uh, that I will sh I'm sharing with my students because in just maybe two weeks from them, I had a terrible injury uh, because some of the cons uh, uh, ended up here. So I had a little wound. Uh, I, I was a little, uh, I don't know, wounded. So I had a little, um, she, she pinched me and then I, the, one of the, the, the comps went here. So that blow that my, 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 my entire, um, entire um, hand was very, you know, pain in pain in two days because, you know, I was not doing nothing else, just grooming the dogs and then it get, get, got infected. And I, I had a lot of trouble getting away from that from that scratch, name it like that, because she said, oh no, it's just a little scratch. So that scratch was painful for me over a month. Uh, and then I developed an amazing scissoring technique. How? Because now if you want to go and reset your technique, you need to do, and I will give you now, three, one, two, three, yes, Three or four, I don't know, is it three or four? I'll start to do and then we'll see, is it three or four? Um, exercises that you are doing with no scissors in your hands. Because every time now, if you already scissor your dog, every time now you take a scissor, the subconscious will guide you towards using the scissors all the way. And it's okay. We cannot replace the habit by forcing it to be replaced because that is when, when it's coming to what we need to do is working on developing a new habit and when it becomes dominant, it will just replace the bad habit and the bad habit without nourishing, it will, it will just disappear from us. But because of that, we need to separate developing of the habit from the scissors. So improving, learning, teaching or resetting the bad habit or developing the good habit of the scissor use are, is be done with no scissors in the hands. Okay? I'm not seeing your questions because I'm faced uh, 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 opposite to the to the to the camera and but I will take notes and ask uh, all of your questions uh, later on but okay uh, um, now how so this is something that's still in movie theater after 25 years ago this exercise I do as well still even though I don't groom every day and I'm you know grooming uh, in and out not too much today 
but I'm still, when watching a movie in the theater or sometime when I, you know, put earplugs and go around the city to walk, I, I catch up myself exercising my hand in order to develop the habit of the good scissoring. How you will do that? And I suggest you to do that over and over every day when you are walking through the house, when you are watching a movie, when you are watching a game, uh, whatever you do, you can do these things without, without any difference. Fist the hand and move your tongue. It's all. All you need to do is wonderful exercise of developing the muscles that we just spoke about and this remained uh, this, this fist, fist the rest and you will have complete control under your thumb and you see the rest of the hand will not be moved because you fisted into the... This is... I was thinking about... I cannot go around the city because I was, I was in Budapest, I had 16 years old and she told me you need to okay, do this all the time with the scissors and I said I cannot uh, hold... Uh, I cannot... Uh, you know, take the scissors with me in the city, or have it in the in the in the in the in the in the how you say that in the train or in metro while I'm walking because the people will think uh, this one is crazy. But you know, fisting the hand and just moving the finger will do the same because the rest of the fingers will remain the, the uh, quiet and my my muscles will develop by moving only time. So this is everything what you do when you're walking when you are watching the movie, doing everything, something, because this is a habit you develop where your subconscious will get information how the thumb should work. And the rest of the hand, hand can, be, can, be, can be like this. Okay, the little, um, the little uh, advanced technique of this would be Put the hand like this, and then just move finger, to the, just move the thumb towards the finger. If the fingers are moving and have a tendency to move toward it, just keep it like this, and then move the finger toward your hand. So this is little advance, and you don't you don't need to work on that without without scissors. Every day you go, and it's very important. This is a crucial thing. Will you end up being frustrating because you don't want to do these things? Is do not practice this when you have a scissors in your hand. Leave the bad habit, old habit, call it old habit, don't call it bad habit. Okay, I'm sorry because I don't want to, you know, point to on anyone if someone during the practice of the grooming um, business didn't develop the great, uh, great scissoring technique. And, and you would like to improve it. It's, it's a right, it's a right and the best possible scissoring technique you was able to develop so far. And maybe you feel now is the time to change. Okay, so you was doing it great so far, but let's try it a little different, okay? So, little advance, and you never practice these things with the scissors in your hand. It's very important. Do not think about that and everything what I'm telling you now while you are grooming. You are not getting away from the old way, you are replacing old way, old way with a new way. But the new way first needs to be developed. And we are developing it through the practicing without scissor because there is no difference. Will we do developing these muscles with the scissors or without the scissors? There is no difference. Actually, it is. Because when you have a scissors in your hand, okay, moving towards the bad habit would be immediate. And then you consciously wanted to replace, will end up making you be frustrated. Don't do that to yourself. Practice with no scissors. Move your thumb, you will do the same. Actually, more, because you will develop it very fast. It can be developed in a week if you do it every day. This is something that you can do every day and all the day, every day, around when you are going in and out, watching movie, whatever you do. Okay, that's the one and a little advanced is without, uh, without, with open, first is with the fist, the second one is with the, with the open, open, the, how you say this, uh, open fingers and open, uh, I don't know how we call, how we call this, 
hand, hand, okay, and then just move your thumb towards the rest of the hip. The next thing is what you do is when we grow, we should, you know, involve entire energy of our body towards the finger because the thumb is only important. And there is a thing we need to develop in front of the in front of the in front of the mirror. So this is the habit that you will practice inside the mirror every day. Every day for uh, let's say for the when you start to practice, it will immediately you know uh, help you get uh, muscles inflamed, and then it will be very difficult. But in a while, maybe in a week or two everything will just go smoothly for you. So just don't care about. In the first day, uh, you do it twice in the morning and before you go to bed. In the morning, immediately after you wake up. In the evening, after you go in the bed. Five minutes, set yourself a goal of doing it 15 minutes. And if you, after 15 minutes of doing it twice a day, so half an hour a day, and if you do not get inflammated tomorrow, it's meaning everything is perfect. And actually, what actually happened there, and actually you developed entire muscles that are so now this it's it, the muscle of the of the of the of the tongue doesn't and here it goes directly into the back. And if we are not using it properly, the back pain is actually caused by the un. This is how we stay uh, around the table, and on top of that, the circulation because of the of the uh, not proper use of the scissors might cause a pain in the in the, in the back. So what we do is uh, you stay in the front of the mirror, and now 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 you watch me. You first need to put the the right or left hand. Uh, I'm doing now with the with the left hand because uh, it's easier for my for my. Uh, Laura, to, to make this uh, to make this video fast. Okay, so uh, have it straight. Your arm straight with your with your with your carpal tunnel. Okay, have it straight. Now you uh, do the um, make this angle in the in the in the elbow. Okay, turn it like this. Hold it because now this is okay. But soon you put it up, the tendency of the elbow is to go go down. Okay care about that so this up straight straight so this straight 1990 and now you try to be a big boy by but pulling only only a tub up and down up and down straight 90 angles straight 90 angle and now so now you are forcing entire body entire hand to work and to be focused only to the thumb and this way, when thumbs move, entire circle muscles will be developed because they are in fully focus and force position now to be developed. This is exercise, this is a gym for the perfect scissoring technique. Soon you will be, okay, you see my, my, my hand had to go inside, so take care about this. Up, straight, straight. Straight, straight, and only time. Watch your, and immediately you will notice. Actually, you will see here, and you will see here, and you will feel the pain inside. And it's all okay because what we are doing now is we are developing our technique for the most precious tool this industry had a pleasure to use: scissoring technique. No scissors in your hand. Only thumb movement, muscle development. Once you develop the muscles, you are the king of your kingdom. These three, it was one, two, this is second, and we have one more. But this one is very difficult because you will, you will feel, okay, um, exercising with a, in, in a gym for, you know, doing the arms being stronger and the back being stronger. It's always helpful for the groomers. But every, every cause of the pains we have in back comes from lack of entire line of muscles being engaged in moving the thumb and controlling the cutting edge of the scissors. 
The shaping edge one actually is the one that remains straight, handled, and uh, you know developed by the by the by uh, and the, uh, protected by the by the rest of the head. Hand is actually so one. He also moves back to the fingers, but actually what we are developing now with this is just you know implementing the habit of the developing the muscles, and this will become this will become your routine, and then suddenly. Actually, when you go work to work, you do normally. You do normally. You cannot, again, you cannot just decide to develop old habit, uh, replace old habit with a new one uh, overnight. What you need to do is be clever. Be, be more, much clever than your habit is. Work on developing a new habit. And by nourishing a new habit, the old one will just disappear. And you will end up being very much uh, into the point of, wow, when did this happen? It didn't get, it didn't uh, happen overnight. You worked hard on that and you dedicated your time. Okay, tell yourself, in return of developing of the perfect scissoring technique that I'm grateful and thankful today that I have, I dedicate 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon or before I go to bed in front of the mirror doing this, you know, up and down, practicing my thumb and going all over the place with the fist and the thumb going around. This is how I will develop and this is what I dedicate, time. And time in our, you know, time is life. So part of the life you dedicate to your improvement. This is what you dedicated to your improvement. You was waking up in the morning, it's six o'clock in New Zealand. You stay late, it's uh, almost uh, two hours uh, a.m. in the, some part of the, of the America. You dedicated part of your life to some new informations and the messages that can help you improve. Do not just get over that. Action is something that can, this, this is a message. And very, I can say, this message, this, this thought, this little wound I got with that poodle comb when I was 16 set my path to everything I'm doing today. Regardless other people's opinion of that, I live fulfilled life. Do I have problems? Yes, I do. But once you live a fulfilled life, the way of handling the problems become different. Frustration, when you are not able to express everything you want, it's big and sometimes can help you because it, the routine is not developed properly to retire before it's time for that. Dedicate a little more of these practices and it, you, it will improve your life, professional life for sure, but it will be easier for you to do uh, on, the, on, the, on the other side as well. So, uh, third, once you are done with that, okay, and I encourage you to do these practices, let's say, until you do not uh, feel that you don't have any more pain while doing this practice in the back. And it's not a pain, it's, you, you, will, you will feel it like a nice pain because it's the same pain you feel after your muscles go uh, burned in the gym. So it's meaning something is working, something is developing, something is getting new in my body. And this is towards my progressing in the field of the of the scissoring okay once and what is a very difficult thing to do is now we are getting into the scissors uh, all the collection of ours and i developed this beautiful collection because i knew what i want and i knew what 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 uh, what will help me and what will help all of the people improve in their skills is first uh you can can you just here see first this a little hole here is designed you can see it is a little broken okay I pick up this was some uh, I, I don't say that other does, doesn't have it but we have it purposely it's because 
doesn't allow you to put even if you can if your if your um, um, fingers are uh, tiny and little and you can put them through this hole actually the design a hole is that you are not you don't need to put it you are just able to handle the scissors like this even without putting a hole can you can you can you show it here without putting an entire thumb inside your inside your scissors so it's it's because uh, this hole upstairs is designed to be very nicely helping you move okay and the design of this part of the handle is actually that have every single every single finger is have his own place while entire fist is on some stage stays and remain straight okay and this is in, in our economic line all of the design of the of the of the of the handles is the same but we use even it's not for mine because uh, i can use it perfectly because it does fit mine as well but for me is might be a little smaller but i have enormously big <laughs> big heads and if we say our industry is 99 or maybe 98 percent of the of the of the girls which we love is uh, actually the uh, act this economic line of ours is designed uh, to but also i can handle it and you will improve you will see that if some of you start with a start with a seven inch scissors or seven and a half inch scissors you will slowly as you develop your control of the of the of the of the of the shaping edge okay you will be able to control even though the big thing big scissors of the big scissors of nine inch okay the difference uh, usually i use uh, only nine nine ones and then i use chunkers in these chunkers uh, chunkers are a little different so these uh, chunkers you use and then you bounce to the coat and back doing like this but it's it's um, uh, specially designed to do it that way what yeah, it's specially designed to do it that way because actually in order to keep, because uh, these um, chunkers we are using when we want to do the, the, the natural appearance, when you don't want to have that straight and, you know, unnatural straightness, if you want to give, give a little flair of, of, um, of, um, of, uh, ba, 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 of natural shape, then you will go over with, with, the, with the blenders. But <clears throat> what I want to do to tell you now, even, even if you developed your thumb communication and your rest of the hand communication to perfection, if you do not learn, or actually not you, if we do not learn to keep the scissor straight like a magnet, coat and the scissors are the magnet. And once the magnet is polar to its, its opposite side, doesn't move from it, remains magnetized. Why I'm saying this? Because I see very easily developed habit of bouncing in and out in the coat, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. This is the worst, even though the people are taking care because they thought it should, should be like that. Someone told me I should do it like that and I'm doing it like that. Without knowing why, it's like you are forced to do something right. Once you understand why, developing the habit becomes conscious decision of improvement. That's the most important thing. And now, when I see people working and they are not getting nice surfaces is because they are bouncing in and out, in and out. And the pressure of the scissors sometimes is harder and sometimes is not so hard. So actually the holes on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the surface are something that are result of that. And instead of, you know, uh, getting through the coat once or twice, you know, usually what I do is once, first time, uh, shape it roughly and second time smooth it like to, uh, to, to do the finish and then it's done I'm not going over the surfaces over and over only if I'm not satisfied with length of the coat I will go again and take a little more 
but I do not bounce in and out and because of that my surfaces are very nice and clean. I don't speak about shape here, of the shape and profile of the dogs. That might be an argue, do you like it or not, but the surfaces after, uh, uh, after, after um, people who are uh, grooming it with, uh, with that magnet, uh, magnet uh, syndrome, call it that way, uh, and you just get close to the, to, the, to, the, to the coat and you cut it, you rest. 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 You not cut and move. Cut and move. Cut and move. Cut and rest. Cut and rest. This is how I teach my kids. I mean my students. Cut and rest. 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 No cut, 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 cut. No. Cut and rest. 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 How you can develop that? Um, I, I want just uh, you, um, to, I don't know, uh, show the scissors until I do not bring something. I just want to... <coughs> okay, I'm back. Okay, great. Thank you. This is what I want you to see. It's actually uh, on off. On off, okay. Okay, the oh no kilogram, no grams. Okay, so these are let's say the seven inches. Seven inches have uh, 67 from this end. Okay. Okay, on. So 68 grams, or let's change the unit. Uh, uh, is this no, no grams? This is in leaps or whatever. I, I think that this is American. So you see how how um, how light they are. Or if we take the biggest ones, and these are the okay the okay now we want to see the. The big ones, the nine inches. Okay, this is in a, in a, how to say it? Oh my God, I'm sorry. Zeros? Okay, zero. This is in leaps. Yeah, because I, okay, I put it on here, sorry. Okay. 194. And if we put it in grams, it's 87 grams. Less than 100 grams, or in America, less than, uh, it's a 0 0.194. They are very light. They are very light. And usually, why, 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 uh, why it's very good to work with them? Because they not force you to go deep in the coat. So how you develop the habit of that magnet, magnet thing is use straight surface of the table. Now you are able, once you develop, this is a third, uh, third, uh, third, uh, third exercise. One is with the fist, a little the same way of uh, fist and thumb movement, then the same practice, but little, um, little uh, advanced is a uh, fist, uh, open it completely, move the thumb, the next one is 90 degree, 90 degree, and move the, th move the thumb, and once you are done with that, a week or two later, you are able to take your scissors, but not grooming the dogs yet, we are just practicing, aside of everyday work, you are improving a scissoring technique without scissoring the dogs, First, without doing the scissors, at, using the scissors at all. Second, when you use the scissors, you do not groom the dogs yet with the scissors and the technique you approach. And when grooming the dogs and doing everyday job, you are not thinking about improving the technique while grooming the dogs. It's not the place where you need to improve your new habit that we are just developing, okay? It's the surface. So what you do is once you are ready, once you are ready with the, with the scissoring, so your hand remains straight, your, your uh, 
you're cutting only with a thumb. Only what you do is put your scissors on the table and just open and close, open and close, and try to understand that you are forcing this, okay? This is what you do. You can do it uh, on the table. You can do it, um, okay, on the table it's very important, but once you, once you okay, this one straight, remains straight, and then you go up and down and up and down and always uh, place it for here, from here, from here, uh, from here. Always, okay, opening and closing it by keeping the scissor on the table. And this is how you will learn to press all the time and have a straight and nice line because you will ever, never, you know, bounce in and out. Cut and stay, cut and stay, cut and stay, cut and stay, cut and stay. Cut. Do not go in and out, in and out, in and out. Okay, once you are done, once you are done with the, with the, with the table, you can, you can come to the, you can come to the, to the, to the, to the, some kind of, uh, how you call this? Retiravna uh, površina door okay door thing and you just put it here and now you are learning how to go this is left and right this is up and down up and down up and down stay straight and up and down up and down up and down up and down and this is how you will learn how you will get perfect develop perfect scissoring technique nothing else will help you get out from the from the habits that we already developed. That is, yes, that is, uh, uh, start, if you are, if you are, you, we all have a beautiful pair of shears, like uh, you, you have a great, uh, great uh, um, brands out there. I do personally, everything I do, I do with, uh, with our line because we really developed it passionately. passionately Passionately, because I know what is about to, you know, have your uh, your scissors work and speak your story loud. Okay, and then after this is done, so we have one again, one fist, advanced fist is open, open, open hand. After one week of practicing fist only, one week, seven days. Do not force you for tomorrow to go and do all three exercises. No, 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 no. One, one step at a time. You was able to groom like this for, for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, one year, two years. You will groom like this for two weeks more, three weeks more. Patient. First week, advance. Second week, add a mirror in front of the mirror when you are, you know, doing your brushes before you go into the bed or brushing your teeth just after you woke up, doing this uh, straight, 90 degree up, like this, 90 degree. Take care about everything and then move. And when you are watching it into the mirror, everything should remain like this. And now you are putting in action and tension all of the muscles that actually will help you move only the... Then two weeks, two weeks or after you are done with feelings that all is okay here, you are taking this exercise. Just then you are taking the scissors in your hand and you are just moving left and right or up and down. And you are done. And this will improve. So you, you need to cheat on your habit and develop the new one aside. The old one is thinking it will be replaced because they will, she will fight because the most biggest dark is just before, just before sunrise. And this is what we called the last step. A lot of people are afraid to do because you are entering now in some, you, someone, you, 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 know, you find some random guy on the internet because someone of your friends shared this video uh, and you might find it interesting content and subject. And you find someone here who tries after 25 years of your habit of doing scissors or even though you already told yourself I'm not good scissoring guy and I don't scissor dogs and then I choose to hand strip or whatever. Scissoring is a 
ultimate primary tool of the groomers and in appreciation and thankfulness of this beautiful industry should be the practice of using scissors should be developed to perfection regardless that are you using it or not you are a professional groomer you claim yourself as a professional groomer. we should develop everything one professional groomer should have as an ability and then just choose not to work with it because the clients want something else and now this is this this was i this, this is i was waiting forever to tell you uh, because it's not done yet you will yet after these three weeks not go to the new and the dogs that you groom every day without thinking about implementing these things it must come without you wanting to come and this lecture is actually not how i told you to do is first how i told you why it should be done and i don't find any other way of doing right scissoring without moving on the tongue bouncing out and in the coat and getting perfect surfaces if you want to feel yourself really fulfilled you should develop this habits too and I'm helping you and ensuring you, you will not be able to get it overnight. You, I want you to repeat on watching this video and helping you improve with these movements of your fingers and thumbs until you do not develop a new habit. And then, finally, when you want to approach a dog by thinking about how entire dog should be groomed with implementing a new habit because you feel enough confident now to do it. Trust me, even if you are 25 years old, uh, the groomer experienced, if you are in the process of changing habit, I advise you not to try it first thinking of using it on the live animal. You try with uh, this is, uh, I call it a grooming doll or the model dog and uh, suddenly we just got them uh, uh, importing so as well this tool can be found on our web page and you are very welcome to, to order it and it's a free shipping from, for um, all over the world what you need to do is to brush this little thing out and just then this uh, just yes this should be okay this should be all brushed out and uh, I just didn't do that because uh, this little baby just came in so I just wanted to to take a couple of photos but I will sure be doing a video about uh, brushing and everything but even though every one of you can do that just take a brush and brush it all over the place this dog is not used to learn the dreams of the dog because that is that is uh, developing of your uh, picture in your mind and then putting all of the dots together and you must develop it by doing the right live dogs because sometime when it says bone to bone bones are usually the guidelines but when you do it bone and you take a guideline of the back rib in the dog you will end up one dog being very long and the other one being very short because the last trip doesn't stay on the right position then the question is what is the right position so in order to do that you need to learn profile of the dog is never to be learned by doing it the profile of the dog is always to be learned by reading it learning it writing it understanding it and then the knowledge will just pop up your grooming is expression of your knowledge that is expressed through technique so if you are not satisfied with the, groom, with the grooming do not blame yourself because you don't know you wanted to make it better because these pictures look better and that picture look better and i'm so and i don't know how to do it and i will never know how to groom the dogs learn it the eye cannot see what the mind is not seeing 
And in order to put the picture in your mind, you need to visualize it. And visualization is coming from the no experienced knowledge. Experienced knowledge first need to be a knowledge. So you need to implement it. And why we are using these little puppies in only, so now, now, just now, after all of these practices, up and down, left and right, in and out, in front of the mirror, I'm doing it with the with dog. But dog that doesn't move. So I don't need to focus my attention on the little Barney of the Mrs. P or Miss, Mr. Mr. David because it's a little cutie spoiled thing that I would okay practice my improving improved scissor habit but I can't because he's he's nonsense on the table or I have a lot of clients you are never doing this that or not improvement is not happening over the working hours improvement is happening after the working hours that's your extra dedication to your future that's something extra that you want to dedicate to yourself for yourself and the ones you love and just after all of these things i want myself to be fully aware and fully dedicated to my scissoring and once i start getting perfect and then i can try then i can try working like this and doing like that and then doing it like this it's not a matter of doing it nice because if it stays and you know what you are what you want to achieve you will always achieve it what i want to see is a nice and flat surface and in this particular kind of dogs it's very difficult to be achieved it's very difficult to be achieved because the scissor marks are very visible. And you can do this dog over and over one zillion times until this dog doesn't stay with no coat on it. Because actually the purpose of this dog and you and scissors is to improve your scissoring technique and help you improve with it to perfection. So it's a, not a model dog. This dog is in, in my perspective and my uh, in our coaching and I call it grooming doll you use it to improve your scissoring technique and on the end of the day you can put it if you want to uh, you can you can do it uh, also shape it beautifully and put it in the window of the of the of your store so you can show how beautiful you can groom the dogs it's okay but as a pra as a matter of practice this dog can, re can remain with no coat on it and then you can, you know, cut it, cut uh, little by little, inch by inch, and help yourself improve and work. And this is when you think about how you hold, how you move the thumb, and what you are doing with the scissors. When you are practicing on the grooming doll. Otherwise, in your grooming shop, please trust me don't think about this might be for you a lot of you might be very inspirational might of you can find it boring or disturbing might of you can feel defended because sometimes you ask yourself so long in the business but what what did i make wrong because technique can prevent you from expressing your knowledge outside of yourself so you are not satisfied before, we, we, we are not satisfied with the final picture we see only because of two things. Our mind is not set towards the perfect picture properly or our mind is set towards perfect picture, picture properly and we do see the goal in front of our eye but we don't have a technique to express that because or we are, you know, doing it like this or we are, you know, bouncing in and out of the coat, or, and then we do a beautiful shape, but we are not satisfied with the finished work. Or sometimes frustration because of the finished work can prevent us having a beautiful shape. Either or can lead in disappointment uh, of feeling dummy, of feeling unimportant and unable to progress.
but not true. Only a little more dedication. After you do understand why, and that is only, only the progress, the paradox, the, 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 the uh, how you call that, the paradox of progress is going, going backwards. It's the same when you have a bow and arrow. If you want to hit the arrow as much as you throw, uh, want in the front, you, the first movement is going backward, 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 backward to the ground zero. And just from there, the, 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 the strength and the power that the bow is getting in order to approach the goal is maximum. And this our little journey of today was the ground zero of the grooming industry and the grooming business. And this is what really would love to encourage you to share with every, much as possible of your friends in this field. I would love to help all of the schools implement this technique because developing a scissoring technique for the groomer is a future. Not because the people will ask from you to develop a beautiful style of puppy trim or the continental trim or groom the caribou terrier in all the Bedlington terrier in beautiful show trims. No, but because of yourself. This is something what we need to develop because we are the professional groomers and we are the state of the art groomers. We need to handle our tools with the state of the art technique. Then the reward is coming. This is what I'm putting out. I dedicate myself to learn and to improve holding the scissors. The rewards are just coming back. And this is what you, once we understand this universal principle of success, our life will become much easier. Everyday grooming with the business, and then everything what we dedicate to our improvement after working hours. And then you are just watching miracles happen around. Do not copy, create. And in order to create, to create you must be free of, uh, of, uh, of uh, how do you say, free of, uh, of addiction to someone or to something. And in order to get to the freedom of of complete uh, enlightenment, professional enlightenment, you need to learn and improve. And this is what I'm giving. I'm working nine, 10, eight hours in my shop. And then I go home and I work for myself. 15 minutes, I read something, I watch something, I listen something, because I know that extra mile that I put out, it will come in return as an abundance not ever seen in the life. And it's a natural law. Give and you will get. Ask and you will find. Knock and it will open. And this technique that we are actually using over and over is this, appreciating the natural beauty of the anatomy of our hand, appreciating it and asking our body to help us create perfection. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed. You was, even though I, I didn't saw any one of you there, I didn't, uh, I was too focused to uh, speak to you, that I didn't uh, have time uh, watching your questions. But uh, you be sure that I will come back uh, to each and every one of you who had a question and my moderators didn't have an, uh, maybe uh, time or uh, didn't know how to answer it. I'll do that myself. And uh, please uh, comment, like, share. And I think uh, today I uh, helped you on some way on the secrets to scissoring. There was actually no secrets. Everything is already known. It's just a way of decoding some known things. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy your day, night, morning, whatever left from, the, from, from this beautiful 13th or 14th of April. 
and then have everyone a beautiful coming Easter weekend and uh, let this be a resurrection of our new approach and the grooming business we develop from now on. Thank you very much and have a beautiful evening.